Hello everyone. This time around I want to talk a bit about driver tests, um, qualification tests for licenses, and reversing. Uh, on Canada's Worst Driver this week they had their uh, now annual longest reverse in the world. Which is just what it sounds like. You drive in reverse for a really, 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 really long distance. Now, their challenge should be relatively easy to deal with on account of uh, the way they set it up. It gets wider and wider and wider as the course goes on. So, uh, even if you start wobbling back and forth as you're going, uh, which tends to happen the longer you're reversing, the more wobbly you tend to get, uh, especially as you tend to speed up. So there's a fair bit of room for wobbling around as you're getting closer to the end and likely going faster. And even the host of the show uh, came pretty close to spinning out while he was doing it. And of course, he didn't panic and as a result he uh, managed to get through without hitting anything, which, you know, is kind of the goal. But something that I've noticed from watching Worst Driver is that reversing is something that almost all of the uh, drivers on there have immense trouble with. Even the ones that do reasonably well driving forward, they, they have very little understanding what they're doing when they're reversing. Uh, it's... Uh, I think it's a, an indication of some of the things that are wrong with the driver qualification tests. Now, in Alberta, we have, uh, I believe we have graduated uh, licensing where you get, your, you get your learners, you pass the test, and you get a restricted license, and then things go on from there. I'm not sure because I got my license before that all came in, but... It was, uh, it, it wasn't something that really I, I thought would make any real difference. I think the problem we have is not with experience behind the wheel so much as we're not training drivers properly and we're not preventing the people that aren't learning how to drive from getting a license. It's pretty clear from worst driver that a lot of the people with driver's licenses never actually knew how to drive so how the blaze is that they pass even a basic driving test so yeah now even back when I got my license the driving test was real real basic could you go forward did you stop at a red light did you stop at a stop sign uh, you know could you steer around corners stay in your lane uh, and there was a minimal uh, test of parallel parking. You had to parallel park, uh, which I guess is supposed to test reversing skills, but it really doesn't. At the, at the best, it tests whether you can back around at a 45-degree angle and then straighten out again in an S pattern. It doesn't actually test whether you actually know how to reverse a car. And even uh, having taken uh, a driver training course, uh, they didn't concentrate much on reversing. They concentrate. They basically taught to the test, so they concentrated heavily on parallel parking because that was required to pass the test at all. But they didn't really explain how you do the reversing. How do you back up in a straight line? How do you, you know... Uh, and they didn't even deal with the big thing, look where you want to go all that much, uh, which applies when you're driving in reverse, too. Uh, you just have to set yourself up right in the car. Uh, you need to be looking out the middle of the back window and hold the steering wheel on the top of the wheel. And uh, don't go too fast and don't stop every time you steer and you should be able to drive in a relatively straight line. But they didn't teach this, and they don't test backing in a straight line on the on driving tests. 
They don't test a whole bunch of other things like knowing where your wheels are and things like that either, um, which is important. Uh, although knowing where the sides of the car is is uh, even more so, so you don't actually hit things, but knowing where your wheels are makes that easier. Now, uh, driving tests, you know, like when, when I took the test, it was something like a 20 minute test uh, or 15 minute test or something like that. Uh, and there's no way you can properly test driving skill in that length of time. And, and back then, the driver examiners were actually directly employed by the uh, motor vehicle people. So, you know, there was a little less emphasis on getting as many tests through as possible so that you can make the bottom line. Unlike today, where in Alberta, the uh, testers are actually uh, outsourced contractors. Now, it's, it's particularly interesting, I'm watching Worst Driver, and you see these people uh, on there. Now, granted, this is cherry-picking the worst of the worst, so the majority probably aren't quite that bad, but seeing these people have valid driver's licenses, and it makes you wonder, how did they get them? They clearly didn't know how to drive when they got the license. Well... I think there's two problems here. One, it's actually too easy to get a driver's license. Far too easy. Uh, and that probably comes to the uh, culture we've got of you can't fail somebody because it's bad for their self-esteem, which is a load of bullshit. But, eh, that's the culture. Uh, but if we make it too easy to get a driver's license. And the excuse is, well, driving is pretty much required for, uh, for many people, you know, in, like in a rural setting or whatever. Maybe it is. But if you can't operate a motor vehicle safely, you have no business operating it on public roads. And even on private property, it's still dicey. Uh, so... Yeah, we got to get over that. It's also too easy to keep a driver's license if you really come down to it. Once you get the driver's license, there's no need for repeat tests to make sure you can still drive, except in certain circumstances due to medical conditions or age or whatever when you get, uh, get on in years. And, uh, you know, and as the rules of the road change over time, you need to, you know, there, there's nothing making sure that you're keeping up with it. There's nothing making sure that you know how to deal with that new traffic control measure that exists. There's nothing making sure that you, you, you can still, um, you know, drive where you intend to go. There's no mental problems preventing you from driving safely, that sort of thing. There's, like, we don't have regular physicals required for driving there's there's you know the, the best they do is minimal eye testing very minimal and you know that you know the eye testing probably make, uh, makes sense uh, the level they do it at uh, but like seriously uh, th there's no real accountability once you get your driver's license Sure, you can lose your license for too many speeding tickets, uh, things like that. And there's the bullshit where you get your license suspended on the roadside instantly if they even think you're impaired, uh, which is uh, guilty until proven guilty the way the uh, setup I exists uh, because the breath testing machine pretty much accepted as infallible, even though they aren't. There are a few corner cases where they can read false positive, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, there, there's a whole bunch of stuff there, but there's no real accountability uh, for uh, accidents, 
uh, 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 an at-fault accident doesn't count against your actual driver's license unless there's there's charges, and those charges have to you know stand and all of that. Now, uh, you know there you really there needs to be charges in in a lot of these cases, but so many times there isn't. Now, of course, and a lot of times it's because they don't actually know who the driver is and you hit and run and things like that. But some of these people, they have uh, dozens of insurance claims. They have, uh, they have uh, you know, tons of uh, encounters with police officers or whatever, and they haven't had their license suspended for driving without due care and attention or for for uh, you know speeding or uh, you know n not staying in their lanes or all sorts of things like that and it, it's uh, it's actually you know and now to be honest uh, I wouldn't like to have to go through uh, the stuff that I think we really should have to go through to maintain a driver's license so the, the standards need to be a lot stricter uh, but, you know, just like for aviation, there's some fairly strict standards. There needs to be much stricter standards for motor vehicle operation. Uh, and to be honest, I really wouldn't want to have to deal with stricter standards myself. I'm pretty sure if I had to take a driver t driving test right now, there's pretty good odds that I wouldn't pass it. And I'm a reasonably good driver as far as things go. I'm not the best driver in the world, and I'm not the worst driver in the world. I'm, if, you know, I, I think I might be above average, but you know, I'm not the judge of that. I, I really can't judge that. Uh, but the uh, number of times, uh, number of people I've seen doing stupid stuff on the road, maybe I am above average. I don't know. Uh, more likely I'm not, you know, more likely I'm dead middle of the pack, just like most people, you know, uh, if it's a bell curve distribution, about 75% of the uh, people would be in the, within the first standard deviation, which, uh, you know, likely that's where I am, just like 75% of the people out there. But, you know, if, if I think if we were to concentrate on a more in-depth driver test and concentrate a bit more on reversing, which is a much more difficult skill than driving forward, we probably have, uh, at least uh, on average, a better crop of drivers out there. I, I really do believe that. Uh, the driving test should be a lot more than like a 10-minute quickie to tick off a few boxes. It really should be uh, probably an hour or so uh, going through an in-depth set of uh, circumstances including rural roads, urban streets, parking, uh, all of that. But I don't see that happening as the resources to do the testing just wouldn't be there. Uh, but it's what we should be doing. Uh, and Barring that, you know, people that even some of these people I see out there are should be failing the tests we have now, yet they're not. Like one of the uh, contestants on Worst Driver this year uh, clearly has no idea how to drive and just doesn't get how to drive. He's not, you know, he might be learning a little bit now, but he he clearly didn't learn before. So how did he even pass the driver's test? So it makes you wonder. Anyway, um, you know, backing up. Uh, if you are uncomfortable reversing, get out there in a safe place and practice backing up in a straight line. Look straight out the middle of the back window. That means twisting yourself around, hold the steering wheel on the top, and go relatively slowly and go straight toward a target. Look at the thing you want to drive toward. It'll be amazing. You'll find that you go exactly where you, you want to go after a little bit of practice on the control. It's amazing the uh, uh, capability are in our brains for uh, navigation and so on. 
Uh, so much of driving is so automatic, just relying on that once you get used to where the car is. And it's a thing. We're tool users, and a car is a tool, and we just need to use it properly. Anyway, uh, everyone needs to learn how to reverse properly. Uh, it's, uh, it's critical. Uh, it's critical to avoid accidents and so on. So many accidents you see are due to people reversing improperly. Uh, so, you know, let's see if maybe we can improve testing standards for driver's licenses to include reversing. And let's see, even if we don't do that, if those of us that actually are driving can learn how to reverse properly. Uh, like, seriously. Uh, there's not much to it. It's a complicated skill, but there's not much to it. Look where you want to go. Look out the back window. Keep in mind the front end swing, and you're good. So, or at least you're better. So, really, reversing. It's important. Learn it. Uh, that's all for this time. Thanks for watching.